All right, guys, welcome back to RC Every Day, part two of my number two rat rod kit assembly. So in the last video, I stopped. I think we didn't have rear shocks. So I've already done a couple things we'll discuss first before we move on to mounting the cabs. So just to be clear, uh, this is out now. Uh, last Thursday, I announced it. And um, the, basically the 140 is this right here and 120 for the cabs. Um, these are all SLS prints. Done all in the United States. Everything is uh, super durable. And uh, yeah, it's made to work. The cabs are officially licensed by Awesome Designs. Uh, the print file is available for free. If you'd like to print your own, you're more than welcome to. Um, the print files that are free do not have the changes that I've made to where it will mount on this chassis specifically, but they are the same cab. And, you know, I've used them before without custom mounts, made my own, used magnets, things like that. So let's get started take a look at the rear shocks out the gate here. So the rear shocks I'm using on this particular setup are the RC Pro Drive Bilstein 50 millimeter, really scale shock. Um, they have 50 and 60 millimeter in those. I think they have 70 and 80 also, but the 50 and 60 have just come out. We we'll use the 60 on the front. Um, if you need to know how to do the front suspension, that is back in the part one of this uh, video series. Uh, back here, it's pretty simple. I just ran longer screws to the bottom mount to give me the most room I had for the shock. And then we bolted it in up here using some spacers. I think that's probably a, it looks like a six mil spacer to get it away from the frame rail so the body doesn't hit. But this is one of those areas where it's, it's completely open to whatever you want to do. Um, you could do touring car shocks, you could do big shocks, you could do air suspension, servos, whatever you got. You got all these holes here to play with. And then you have all the mounts on the axle like you would normally have on your crawler. Um, yeah, I just put that there because that didn't take any other parts. If you really wanted to, you could use like a RC four wheel drive Jalan 2 shock hoop and put giant tall shocks on there. It all depends uh, the layout of the four lane stuff, what size tire you run. This is a pretty tall tire. This is an RC four wheel drive dirt grabber, one nine. So needed to have a little bit shorter shock. Still gives us plenty of suspension movement. Uh, we won't fully articulate the four link but again this is an on-road based car so we don't really need that it's a little bit better angle you can see how the shocks angle in to clear the the chassis rails so there's no rubbing or anything um i got pretty desperate for hardware trying to throw those on before the event last weekend so i just used some old to me and nuts that don't even match but again hardware is something you probably got a bunch of it laying around so shock configuration four link length it's all up to you whatever you want to build it could be super short, like I said before in the four link uh, part of the video. I typically use 40 mil rods for my four links, keep it nice and tight. This one is a little bit longer because I didn't have any 40s at the moment. But um, rods, you know, you can get these rods on Amazon too. You don't have to just buy them from RC companies. They're also used in uh, computer things like to keep layers of circuit boards apart. They have these little, they call them standoffs. You can get M3 standoff brackets. And they come in all kinds of shapes and knurled or smooth or some of them are hex shaped. I mean, you can make a four link out of them, no matter what size you, uh, size you need. But that's really it for the rear shocks. It's pretty simple. And like I said, if you really wanted to, you could throw a cantilever system up here, put a servo and have it where it can go up and down. There's the possibilities are endless. And there's a lot of mounting options back here. You can move these cross members to wherever you need. You can put the shocks wherever your axle has a place to put them. Again, these Yoda 2s have one here, one here. Then we have our four-link arms. This is where I have it mounted on this one. But, um, yeah, it could be on the back. It could be in the front. You can angle them further forward. Whatever works for your situation. So, next thing, drive shafts. Now, that's going to depend on how long your four-link is or how long a drive shaft you need. This one being pretty long, I've got a 140 millimeter to 180 millimeter. This is a Lesu. Uh, these are for the 114 scale semi-trucks. These are gorgeous nice looking polished it's got a brass joint in each end and they're not very expensive i mean i, I put these on my tf2 long wheel base when we did the extended cab toyota body and we had the gcm uh, transmission so we couldn't run the little carrier bearing we had to put long shafts and they look super super scale they're really nice i've used it on a couple of the rat rods here recently i get these you can find them on ebay um it's i found uh, semi joe's truck shop He's he used to sell on eBay all the time. He has a web store now. He has these in stock most of the time in every length imaginable. So every range, 
Um, it's not too difficult to measure. Like this is a 140 to 180. I'm trying to remember how far this is. See, we barely have any of the slip joint showing and it doesn't really have enough suspension travel to compress much. So we're setting about one, I'm gonna call it 148, 149, 148. So we're at 148 millimeter pretty consistently. So the 140 to 180 fit perfect. Um, I always do that where it'll be, it'll go further the longer direction because then you won't have as much slack here and you don't get nearly as much rattle out of the drive shaft. If it, I had another one I got, I think it was a 120 to, or 130 to 160 or something. And it would work with this, but I had this much of the uh, inner slip shaft showing and it caused a whole lot of vibration. So when you're measuring your drive shaft, lean more towards the longer size that will fit within the range that you have. If you have a whole lot of articulation when you compress the rear, then you'll want to measure it completely compressed and then completely decompressed, but this one, it really doesn't move. So pretty easy. This drive shaft was like $23 plus shipping from Semi Joe, and it's, it's a gorgeous piece. I highly recommend those. They're, I've never had one fail on me. So uh, really kind of simple. All right, so the bodies we've got, this one is still one of the prototypes, but it does have our front body mounts in it. So the way I've designed this, it's going to use like a grub screw, like your TF2s. You get tired of taking those body screws in and out every time you got to change the battery. So you put the little grub screws in and just snap the body around it. And that's the same principle I'm using on this. The rear is designed to just fit around the frame very snugly. I did file this one just a hair because my cross member set up here, I have extra bars and I have these rails pulled in a little bit tighter. I think we talked about that in the last video. So it will wedge itself on there. Another one of the changes we made uh, with from the original Awesome Designs file these slits here used to go up higher because of the frame that he had designed it for and the trans tunnel was a lot lower so we've raised that and lowered these so it fits exactly on the rail so chassis rail slides into that groove and it won't go down past it so your body will be perfectly parallel with the bottom of the chassis rail and our front mounts we've added in here it's all beefed up part of the print um, i do recommend finding a pick or something because this one still had a little bit of uh, powder in it from the printing so before you start scramming scramming screws in there uh, run a pick through here or something a flathead screwdriver whatever you got that's small enough and just uh make sure those holes are clean you don't want to make them any bigger because then your grub screw won't fit but just something fine tipped to get in there so the grub screws i actually have run out because i use them to make rods and things so much so i bought this pack on amazon i think it was like eight dollars it's got a gazillion different sizes. I'm going to use some of these. These are M3 by 10. This bag has 25 in it. So the way it works, it's just going to screw into the body and then we slide the body over the chassis and the grub screw sticks into one of the holes on the chassis rail. And it, the way it's designed with this chassis to this body, our firewall is perfectly right at the back of these screws on the transmission. So everything is perfectly aligned. All right, so I went ahead and switched those to M3 by eights. The tens were looking a little bit long. Uh, this body is super flexible. Uh, this is SLS print, nylon stuff. It is fantastic, but I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to try to start these by hand so we don't get them going all crooked in there. And then we will see if we can get them in straight the rest of the way. This was the most simple way to do body mount. It, it's kind of funny because it's the rat rod kits I, or cars I've built over the years. The body mounts never really, I never really put much thought into it. They just kind of either wedge onto the chassis or I just threw magnets on it to try and get it to stay. And yeah, so actually having some kind of body mount is uh, really nice for a change. There it goes. I'm gonna leave about, it looks about like four millimeters sticking out of there. All right, that looks like that's pretty good. So the way this works, we're just gonna start it on the back of the chassis, align it 
force it down. And then we're gonna come up here, pry it apart, and pop it down into place. Find the hole that looks closest to where we need it. And we're in. Body is on there nice and solid. Very little ride height, just how I like it. So you can see looking right there, you can see that's gonna fit and line up just perfect. Now for the firewalls, I don't have anything, I'm not really ready for that step yet with this one. But um, what I've typically done in the past, this body has provisions here for rare earth magnets. And uh, I just glue in some rare earth magnets and I'll take a piece of sheet metal and I'll just cut it to clear whatever motor transmission I've got and then just magnets on. And I've even gone as far before with that to uh, make another little piece of metal inside of there. And that acts as your motor tray, or your, I mean, sorry, your battery mount. So then I could just pop the body up, pull the firewall out, and I'll get straight access to my battery and it'll snap back into place with the magnets. Here's a look at the back and how it fits up with the chassis. Now, one thing, if you do run a longer uh, bottom link on your four link, you will have to clearance the body out right there and to access those other, what, two or three sets of holes up there. Um, really no need to do that unless you're doing some kind of wild something or other, which more power to you. But uh, it's just made to fit right up against the body like that. The body sits flush with the back of the chassis. And like I said, it's nice and snug. It's not gonna go anywhere. So really that's all there is left to discuss as far as the basic assembly goes. Um, again, there's so much versatility. You can do whatever you want with motor, your firewall, the rear suspension, front suspension, it's all up to you how it comes out. And we ain't even got to painting and weathering and stuff like that. Um, if you're looking for other ideas, check out the channel. I've got tons of videos, all the other rat rod builds all the way through from design to paint and patina to driving them, whatever you want to see. But um, yeah, this is, a, this is a kind of a lifelong dream coming true to actually be producing these. And I'm really excited to see what y'all come up with and what y'all do with them. I'm really looking forward to see what other companies come up with. I mean, this SSD engine is, is very affordable. Um, there's not a whole lot of options available for it. So I'm hoping we see some people come out with some different intakes, uh, some different like headers and things for it. I'm sure that stuff will uh, come along shortly if these really, really take off. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to build this one. I don't know exactly what look or what style yet i kind of want to pay homage to the original the original number two but i don't want it to be the same obviously we've got a different engine so we'll just have to see where it takes us that's that's kind of the fun part with these once you start building it and you get the layout that you like and then the build kind of just takes over has a mind of its own and does goes the direction it needs to go and you just kind of follow along throwing parts at it until one day it's done and you've got an awesome rc rat rod so I'm going to wrap it up here. I appreciate y'all watching. appreciate everybody who's picked one up so far. And I uh, look forward again to seeing what y'all come up with. So get out there and do something fun with the hobby. Keep it scaling. I'll see you next time.